In this video, we talk about how to use the Farmer Macbeth approach to estimate the market price of factor risk. Now, Farmer Macbeth in 1973 proposed a method to jointly estimate the market price of factor risk lambda and the amount of factor risk exposure beta. So basically the key equation is the following. The expected risk premium for asset I equals lambda times beta I. I is the number of assets, goes from one to capital I. And the task is now, how do I estimate the lambda and the beta at the same time? Now, I'm going to apply that approach to estimate the expected risk premium for exposure to the aggregate stock market. So I'm revealing the insight by an example. So here's how we do it. Step one, ask yourself whether there is an economic theory that supports the notion that exposure to the aggregate stock market captures systematic risk. Well, in our case, that is really easy. The well-known CAPM postulates that the market's excess return is a systematic risk factor for which risk-averse investors demand a risk premium. Step two. Now you have to collect a panel of asset returns. I write that as RIT. I goes from one to cap I, so that's the cross section. And then T goes from one to capital T, that's the time series. And you also need a time series of the risk factor that you are considering, which here is the market excess return. Okay, now step three. Now we want to get each stock's exposure to the risk factor. Now that asks us to apply a time series regression to each stock in order to find the beta. Therefore, notation-wise, what we do is for all stocks i, element 1 to capital I, we run the following time series regression, shown as we regress the time series here of ri onto a constant and the time series of market excess returns. We will recover beta I0, beta I1, and the epsilon shocks. Now remember, if the data supports the OLS assumptions, you can rely on OLS to estimate the beta coefficients. If the OLS assumptions don't hold, you have to go with the generalized least squares method. Okay, step four. Now you treat the estimated beta i ones from the previous step as observed and run for each time period a cross-sectional regression. So a cross-sectional regression asks whether firms with a higher beta do indeed pay higher returns. So formally, that second stage regression reads as follows. For all time periods, you run the following cross-sectional regression. You regress the realized returns of firm 1 up to firm capital I onto a constant and their respective beta. What you get out of that is the coefficient that we call alpha t and another one lambda t plus residuals. So that allows you to get a least squares estimate for the time series of alpha and the time series for lambda. Step five, Farmer Macbeth defined the risk premium for market exposure so the factor premium for a unit exposure to market risk here, the expected excess return as follows. They simply take the sample average of all calculated lambda t hats. So you see it's the unconditional expectation which they approximate here with the sample mean. And now step six, you have to test 
whether your Pharma Macbeth estimate for the market price of risk is statistically different from zero. For that, you could use a t-test. So you calculate the ratio between the estimated lambda and you divide that by the standard deviation of the lambda time series divided by the square root of t. Now note the following four practicalities. First, step six of the above mentioned procedure assumes that the realizations of the factor premiums lambda t are approximately IID. Now there are corrections that you can apply to the standard errors as that assumption will likely not hold in data. Now second, when you estimate the lambda, which is here the expected risk premium of the market with the Pharma Macbeth approach, you basically exploit the covariation of the I different company returns with the systematic risk factor. So the Pharma Macbeth procedure for estimating the lambda does not rely on a limit result. So we don't need the limb of the average market excess return to accurately proxy for the risk premium in the market, for the expected risk premium in the market. All we need is a large cross-section. Now third, as an absolute minimum, in step four, you should use at least, but really at least, 10 observations in the cross-section for each regression. And the fourth practicality is that if you see that the beta hat i0 is statistically significant, then it's likely that an additional factor risk premium is missing. And last not least, I, I argue that you should follow that same procedure if you want to estimate market prices of a linear multi-factor model. So although I've applied that to a one-factor CAFM-like model, just follow the same steps if you go for a multi-factor model. Got feedback? We would love to hear it. Please drop us a line. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.